Hello, welcome. So my name is Stella and I am an EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique Practitioner, as well as a few other things that I offer like hypnotherapy and Qigong, Tai Chi for help that you might have joined me for before um, on the virtual video tour because we do regular sessions. But I've been doing quite regular sessions with EFT tapping for a little while. And today we're going to focus an introduction to EFT tapping. So a little bit more around what it is and how it can benefit you and a bit of the history. So just to give a bit more of a background and we'll do a little bit of tapping as well, but there'll be a bit more sort of information. So we're going to keep it bite sized. It's going to be um, you know, nice and quite simple. But I think that it's really good to have that foundation to know why you, you could benefit from trying this tapping thing, um, whether you've done it before, you've heard about it or you're brand new to it. So, so, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here to share this session with you today. And before I share a little bit about my own journey to finding EFT, um, because I think it's always nice to, to hear that journey about where somebody wants to share something and the inspiration. I want to just set the scene a bit. So, as I said, I'm Stella and I'm from Soul Space Unlimited. That's the name of my business that I support people to do, you know, things that give them space and time. I'm a big believer in finding the time to connect, to relax, to heal. Life can be very busy and overwhelming. So EFT is just one of the tools that I use to do that. For the session today, you don't really need anything uh, other than I would suggest having some water or a cup of tea or coffee, something that's going to keep you hydrated, just to make sure you're as comfortable as you can be. Um, whether you need, yeah, it's not too bad today, is it? But you might need some extra layers, whatever you need, just to be present and comfortable. And hopefully you won't be disturbed. Okay. In the session, it's important to say that EFT, well, we're going to say what EFT is, but I want to start by saying what it isn't. So emotional freedom technique, EFT, it's not a replacement for, um, you know, like a med medical treatment prescription. It is used as an alternative therapy alongside um, other treatments, more medical treatments. So, you know, it's not something that would replace medication or that kind of thing necessarily. And it's good to consult your GP if you start to use tapping. And you have some serious health conditions but it's a complementary therapy much like a lot of other therapies out there um you know that are considered alternative or complementary okay <laughs> so with that in mind we'll get into the tapping a bit more so my my journey to eft presently i am um, an advanced practitioner with eft so that means i've done my level one two and three and I'm also a master trainer. So that means I'm just in the process now of completing my training to train other people in EFT. So I love it. I'm very passionate about it. <laughs> and I am an accredited practitioner, which is um, not always the case. So with EFT, the person who I'll tell you about this um, shortly, but the person who created it, he just gave it to the world. So he didn't um, package it and sell it as a set training, which quite often happens. He decided he wanted to gift, he wanted to gift it to the world because it was this great, really accessible tool that he felt people shouldn't necessarily need to pay for, which is great. That's a gift. It's a gift in the way that obviously it makes it accessible and it helps people to learn about emotional freedom technique without having to pay lots of money for, for the treatments, for the trainings. But um, that's but then there's some other sides to that, you know, in life, there's always pros and cons, aren't there? So the cons to that would be you don't always know what quality of EFT tapping you're getting. So it's very varied qualities out there. And also it can also mean that. With, uh, yeah, with with tapping, you don't necessarily know what you what you're going to get and the, um, the people you work with might not be officially accredited. So it's just a case of yeah, we will summarise towards the end. But if you do want to do work, it's just finding someone you're really comfortable with or finding even an online resource of EFT tapping, um, you know, somebody on YouTube that you feel comfortable with. There's a lot of videos out there. Um, 
but you know they're all about what fits you and your needs as anything in life it's it's you know about the individual okay so i um discovered eft as part of my own training when i was doing hypnotherapy training to be a hypnotherapist and a nlp coach i was doing a bit of tapping because it was introduced just really basic tapping so i shared this basic tapping through um for a few years with my clients and i got to a point <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me i got to a point where i could see i was helping them to an extent but i realized there's way more in this tapping that could really could go to another level like i could be helping clients even more if i knew more if i had better knowledge um you know i needed to i needed to find and develop that knowledge more to get the clients to the next level the results i was seeing were, were really good but i was just sort of beginning to be like wow there's really something in here so i so i went and did those other levels one two three in my training and it's made such a difference to me on my own journey so I do self tapping. That means, you know, I, I will tap on myself um, most days, very regularly. And I also receive tapping sessions. So I work with a practitioner um, who, who gives me uh, this tapping therapy. And I came to this work, you know, my whole training as a, as a practitioner and my business because I had my own journey and issues with health. I was diagnosed with ME, um, chronic fatigue syndrome around 2018 and at that point I had a big crash in energy so I went on a new path just had to change my life around the way I was living wasn't working um I you know had a lot of stress I had not a great work life balance just wasn't taking very good care of myself so I had to change that and one of the things that's helped me change it and to process some of the difficult emotions um, that had been holding me back and making me unwell and releasing some stress that was EFT tapping so that's the reason that I know it's a great tool and I love sharing it with with anybody <laughs> with everybody <laughs> okay cool so that's my story so e EFT it it comes from in a way the the origins of it are connected to eastern philosophy so there's a lot about it that's connected to things like acupuncture, acupressure, and qigong, which I've already mentioned. And all of those practices and treatments are connected to the meridian system. So we'll put meridians to the side for just a moment, and we'll start with, with a bit more of the Eastern philosophy. So when, you might be familiar with um, your comparison between, this is oversimplified, but it, you know, this is just a bite-sized uh, session for you to get an introduction. So you might be familiar with that contrast between, you know, the West philosophy, the Western philosophy and sort of Eastern philosophies. In the West, we tend to um, have a very sort of developed medical model that tends to treat different symptoms in different parts of the body in quite an isolated way. This is changing and evolving. But that is one criticism that we could have of the Western medical model. Whereas in the East, the treatment, the sort of Chinese medical approach is more about a whole system. So you can't separate the mind, the body and the soul or spirit. It's all one system. So when you go to a health professional in the East, um, or let's be more specific, China, you would be treated as that whole system. So if you had a symptom like on your skin, for example, that doctor would probably be looking at, well, what's really going on inside the body? What organ is that connected to? What emotion might that be connected to? What's going on spiritually, emotionally, psychologically and physically? Whereas in the West, it might be more addressing the physical surface issue trying to maybe address more but missing out maybe some of that spiritual stuff the soul the wellness um you know some more of the emotional stuff as i say that is changing and it does depend you know what kind of doctor you see and um what service is available to you it can be different for everybody but in eastern philosophy we're looking at that whole system and eft is really about that because 
we're addressing emotions, we're connecting different organs, connected to meridians. It's it's very much about that mind and body, and again, that emotional and that spiritual element to us. Okay, so I hope you're keeping up. I want to keep it, um, you know, I don't want to get too too complicated with it. But a good example a thing to help you understand EFT is acupuncture. If you've ever experienced acupuncture, that's a great uh, basis to understand EFT. But if you haven't experienced it, then, you know, you've probably heard of it, right? So it's popping really tiny needles into points around the body. And that's to help energy flow, energy move. It's based on that philosophy that we, as humans, um, you know, our system, we need this energy, this life force, which is what chi is, life force, chi, to flow around our system, to flow around our meridians. And these meridians are like channels around our system connected to different organs, which are connected to different emotions, feelings. And when we experience something in life, it could be a physical trauma, emotional, psychological, or it might be something else like a virus, um, an illness. You know, there's, there's a wide range of things that can impact us in life because we're complicated beings. Um, it will affect that meridian system flow. So that chi in these meridians, like streams around the body, might become blocked in places. It might be like there's a, um, you know, like a big boulder just stopping it flowing. And the boulder might be com completely blocking it almost. So it might be just a tiny bit of chi energy getting through. Or it might be smaller and more subtle. It might be in one place of our body where we've got this block. We might have multiple blocks, you know, around our system. So with acupuncture, those needles are clearing those blocks and getting the chi flowing. The more you understand that, the more you understand EFT. So in EFT, we are tapping, like physically tapping on outside of the body, which is less, inv you know, less invasive. So we're not going into the body with a needle. We're tapping on these points and we're helping to stimulate the chi flow, the energy. We're helping to clear the blocks. So we're getting that stream flowing, clearing debris. OK, hopefully that makes you know sense as a little bit of a whistle stop tour of some sort of very simple Eastern philosophies. But I think the key things there are remembering that it's about the whole system. So in EFT, we are addressing the person as a whole, those different layers of the physical, the emotional, the psychological and the spiritual, whatever that means to you. And it's about getting things flowing, getting the chi energy moving. Sometimes in um, different cultures, this chi life force energy is called something different. Uh, in like yoga practices, it tends to be called prana. So that's a similar thing. It's um, this essence that makes makes everything happen within us, really. Energy. Okay. So now we've sort of identified it's a block, an issue with that chi energy that leads to symptoms. How does EFT work to address that? Well, before we go into that, I want to give you a little bit of a history. And I have taken a little bit of some notes just because I want to make sure I get it right. But it's good to know, yeah, where, how we got to where we are really in a really basic way. So when you've got that foundation of the Eastern philosophies that EFT definitely um, borrows from and is connected to, in the West, it developed, you know, um, later on. So it's, it's fairly recent, actually. And it started um, in the 1960s. So you had applied kinesiology. Kinesiology is a form of it's muscle testing. So um, pe the practitioner literally pushes on your muscles and sees how your body responds to um, to something it's asked the body. It can seem quite out there, but um, you know, a lot of people swear by it. I have experienced it and it's very interesting. It's used a lot for allergies. So in 1960s, a chap called George Goodhart developed applied kinesiology. And then following him in the 1970s, a chap called John Diamond developed that into something called behavioral kinesiology. And that was just using the applied kinesiology, that muscle testing, in psychotherapy. So he just took it to another another level, which laid the foundation for what was to come next. In the 1980s, Roger Callahan developed thought field therapy. 
So thought field therapy is um, it's like a more complex version of EFT. It's combining muscle testing with tapping on the meridians, points around the body, but it had a certain tapping sequence. So you'll see a tapping sequence um, shortly, but it had a certain tapping sequence that was specific to each issue. So if somebody came with like insomnia, there would be a certain tapping sequence that he would use for that issue. He had a student called Gary Craig who obviously thought there's something in this, but he decided it needed to be simplified. And he, despite poor, poor um, Roger, poor Roger Callahan spending like 10 years, um, you know, perfecting this thought field therapy, then uh, Gary Craig just like, I think we can do this more simply. And he developed emotional freedom technique, which combined the meridian tapping with something called NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. You don't need to worry about that, but it's basically the use of language. So in EFT, we use the tapping, the physical, and we also speak. So we use the language as well. And there's different ways we use the language, such as reframing, like different perspectives. But again, we won't, we won't go into that in much detail now, but it's just, yeah, remembering the combination of the physical, the body, and the meridians and the language, the speaking, so sort of verbalising. And Gary Craig developed this, simplified it. There was only one sequence. The slight different versions of that one sequence, depending where you train, but overall there's a pretty agreed simple sequence. And it's simplified, and it was, you know, simplified enough for him to feel that he could just give it to the world for free. So that's what he did, um, which, which is great. Um, yeah, and to this day, you can Google Gary Craig EFT and you'll find all kinds of different videos. He's quite a character. Um, he's definitely pioneered it and done a lot to get it well, you know, better, better well known. Okay. So that's a little bit of the history. And you can tell that they're, they're all men. So I think it's important to acknowledge um, a female figure in the EFT field. So a very current figure is somebody called Dr. Peter Stapleton. And despite the name Peter, it might seem like um, it is a male, it's a woman, and she's based in Australia, I think. And she works in academia, she's involved in EFT and research. So she's really keen to push evidence to make sure EFT is evidence based. And there is more evidence coming out to show that, um, you know, how EFT can help. For example, um, if you go on her site, you can see some sort of research studies that show are connected to food cravings, how EFT helps with that. Also some things around, she's doing a lot of promoting of EFT for eyesight, improving eyesight at the moment, memory, she's done that. Um, and you can sign up, subscribe um, to Peter Stapleton's website and you'll get updates about research and EFT. Um, I will put in some information in the comments when I'm when the session's finished, just so you can look at these things if you want to. But of course, you know, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, to learn more of the information's out there. And um, yeah, she she likes to show the research that says EFT, um, you know, one study showed that it could reduce cortisol, the stress hormone, by up to, I think it was 37% in comparison to some other groups alongside that EFT group um, in the trial that were doing things like talking therapy, other, other therapies, or just you know, just talking about an issue without tapping didn't reduce didn't reduce the cortisol by by anything up to that amount. So that's interesting, and it's also evidence around how it helps PTSD, so post traumatic stress disorder. Um, there's been evidence work with veterans who have come back from war very distressed with PTSD, and EFT has been used to support them in that way with positive results. Okay, it's a little bit of history, but you know, it's quite a recent history. We don't want to get into it too much, but you can see how the Eastern philosophy has really laid the foundation, has come over to the West in a way, um, you know, and these other more Western um, trained people have then developed some of this foundation and the meridians into a combination really of East and West um, in emotional freedom technique. Okay. Hope you're keeping up. I hope that makes sense. Um, but as I say, you know, 
there are the comments will be more information and if you've got any questions as well um i'll check the comments and i'll be happy to answer them okay so just thinking we'll go in we'll we'll do the points um in a moment and i'll mention sort of what points connect to what to, to help you get a bit of a picture and then you'll experience some tapping which um i think will be really interesting after having a bit of the context and the background around why you're tapping <laughs> sometimes when somebody comes to see me um and they haven't never tried tapping before or heard of it you know you get them to start tapping on the head and they they might think this is this is bonkers this is really strange so it can be um it can be definite uh, there can be some challenge you know to opening to something quite different sometimes can't there but usually they come round and they discover that it's really helpful so um those meridians that we mentioned eft um you know it's going to get things moving but actually that's quite vague isn't it so how specifically does it do that well, when we when we're tapping, we're tapping on these points, and um, we are helping sometimes quite stuck um, energy, a dysregulation in our system, in our circuit, to begin to move and flow again. So, if you imagine at some point in life um, something distressing, difficult happens, for example, um, somebody might get attacked by a neighbourhood dog, for example, and that act happens. And obviously that, you know, is really unpleasant and um, it could be painful. There could be an injury, but it's also going to be an emotional response, you know, a trigger to as a result of that event. And that emotion could be a really intense fear. And that intense fear might not be processed. It might be pushed down. It's going to disrupt the circuit in a way. You know, imagine we've got these circuits running around us and this distressing event interrupts that circuit. And it's not it's not fixed, it's not resolved because the person just goes on, you know, they get on with their life, which we usually do, instead of um, having a chance to really heal and resolve that issue and process that um, difficult emotion. But over time, you know, that that dysregulation, kind of like a glitch, um, an issue in that circuit, it's potentially going to get worse, become a bit more complex. That person might develop a phobia around animals, around dogs. Um, they could even become nervous, anxious about going out. You can see how um, that, that disruption in the energy circuit with emotions can lead to longer term, more complex issues. And what we could do with EFT. So if we begin tapping through the meridians and supporting somebody to address those emotions, that they were suppressed at the time, like that anxiety, that fear, and how the phobia might have grown. We're helping to, to rewire, we're rewiring in a way. So I'm using circuit and rewire because it's, it's good to have a metaphor that will kind of like an electrical circuit. And that chi energy we mentioned, that life force is kind of like the energy, the electricity that needs to move around our system. So when that thing happens, difficult situation, an event, um, it disrupts it disrupts that circuit and there's, there's a trigger or an emotion as a result. That emotion is probably suppressed instead of processed. So by tapping and acknowledging that emotion later on, years later, potentially, we let it come up to the surface. And that chi energy begins to rewire. And the rewiring happens because we're connecting to the brain as well as the body. We're bringing the mind and the body together. So we're engaging different parts of the brain. And the, amyg the amygdala, which is the stress center of the brain, when we tap, it becomes um, less intense. So it can reduce. We become more relaxed. Just tapping alone, do you remember I said earlier that research shows just tapping can reduce um, stress levels. So that means the amygdala, that part of our brain that can get uh, a bit too uh, overactive in terms of stress and worry and anxiety, uh, that can get a bit quieter, a bit smaller. And that allows the other part of our brain, the hippocampus, to become more engaged. And that allows us to engage more of events and memories 
and we can get some clarity. So some events from our past that are connected to these emotions in our present day, they can begin to come up to our conscious awareness. So it's kind of like they can come down from the depths, like the bottom of the ocean, up to the surface. They begin to bob around on top of the water and we can see them better. So we can understand why we are struggling with what we're struggling with. So I know it's a lot, so I'm just going to connect that in a sort of summary. So we've got this past, we've got this event that happened in the past, like a dog, a dog attack. And that led to that issue in the circuit and different um, emotions were triggered, but they were pushed down. They stayed at the bottom of the ocean, for example. And the memory might even be down there as well. We might not be, you know, that, that present with it. And there might be different emotions going on. So stress might become heightened. Anxiety might become heightened. We're not flowing or functioning as we, as we should. There's an issue with our system and it's causing us distress. By tapping, we're engaging the body, different parts of the brain. We're reducing the stress center of the brain. So it has less power, less influence. Because when it has power and influence, we can't think straight, really. We're not, we're not able to function um, with great clarity. We all know what it's like when you feel stressed. Um, you know, we're not, we're not at our best. Sometimes you can't even think of the basics in life. It's difficult. So we reduce that and we connect with a different part of the brain that helps us to access the events, the memories, the clarity. So we can piece these emotions together that might seem random. We might not know why we're stressed or anxious. And through EFT, we're able to connect that to those events and memories and connect the dots. So we realise, oh, so this anxiety is, is actually connected to this event that happened years ago where this dog attacked me. So that's an example of how it can work in practice. It might seem a bit out there, um, but it is, I've, I've, you know, I've used it with many people and I've seen the results and it really can be like a light bulb. It's like um, there's a light bulb moment when that circuit connects and the person is like connecting the dots of all these different events in their life that's showing up in their present day emotions and, and holding them back quite often. Even though we've had all these events that have happened in our life, we might be aware of them. We, some of them might seem quite distant. Some might be more present with us. But we might not understand or click that they are causing certain things for us. So EFT is a great way to sort of dig down a bit or even dive a bit into that ocean to bring some stuff up nice and gently um, up to the surface so we can look at it and we can release and process it. So as we begin to release and process those emotions, as we address them through the tapping sequence, speaking it out loud, it's like we're giving it a voice. We're saying things that have been pushed down to the bottom of the ocean. We're saying it out loud. And we're having somebody witness that too. It's, um, yeah, it's a really powerful experience because it's like we are being witnessed. And I say that word again because it's important. So when um, Gabor, Gabor Mate is um, a figure in, in psychotherapy and trauma, he talks about trauma quite often. This isn't a direct quote, but something along the lines of it's not just about what, what happens to us when um, something traumatic happens, an event. Um, you know, and the word trauma feels really big, but let's just say like a distressing event that causes us emotional or physical um, distress. And really it's just, you know, trauma is anything, stress that overwhelms the system of what we're able to reasonably cope with at the time. And as a child, that might not be, you know, that might not be a huge thing that overwhelms and distresses us. So we can have small life events that still stress, cause a lot of stress. But it's the not being witnessed. So what happens when that when that event happens? You know, if you are consoled and taken care of, um, then you're less likely to have ongoing symptoms and issues as a result of that. But if you are in isolation and on your own and you don't have the network or the needs or the ability, sorry, to support yourself or be supported, then you're going to develop probably more issues, more complications and emotions as a result. So witnessing, saying these things out loud, even years later, is very powerful. Good. OK, um, it's a lot of information. So I just want to do a bit of, um, a bit of tapping with you in a moment. 
but I hope that that's given you a bit of an overview around emotional freedom technique and the name itself emotional freedom technique I think is just says you know says a lot it is about developing more freedom in our life so there's a lot of things that hold us back that stop us moving forward in the way that we want whether it's a belief that stops us being who we want to be, uh, a belief about what we deserve, self-worth is definitely a big part, a big piece. And it's about releasing some of those blocks that are holding us back so we can live in more freedom, which, you know, don't we all want? And I think we all deserve. And the beautiful thing about EFT is that it addresses the light and the dark it brings balance. So we address those negative, heavy emotions and the things, the challenges, the things we're struggling with. And we give them that voice. We acknowledge them and we feel them in the body. So we find where those emotions, those challenges sit thematically in our body. So quite often somebody might say, you know, I'm, I'm worried, I'm stressed. And as a practitioner, I would ask them, where do you feel that worry, that stress in your body? Quite often, for example, somebody will say in my chest and we might then find a colour, a shape, um, you know, a word, something that gives that a bit more, uh, a bit more shape for them. And we'll use that in the tapping, but we're connecting them with where it sits in the body. So we're using that body element, which you remember is really important in those alternative Eastern philosophies and therapies. And then we're also going to bring in self-compassion and acceptance a bit more. So acknowledging that negative, that heaviness, that difficult feeling, but then we're going to support the person. We're going to support you with bringing in more self-compassion. So how could you accept yourself more, even though you have this anxiety in your chest? Could you have more self-compassion, which is something a lot of us struggle with. And it's the core to a lot of the um, things that we're struggling with, a lack of self-compassion. OK, so it's that balancing element and it can be hard to um, for people can find it strange to be saying these negative things out loud. Because I think it make it makes them true, but it doesn't. It doesn't. In fact, they have more power if we push them down into the unconscious at the bottom of that ocean. If we say them out loud, let them come up. It's almost like we're released from them. They don't have hold over us anymore. We are free as we speak them out. It's that freedom element. So. That is a really important part of the process and it's balancing the system. OK, the metaphor of things coming up from the bottom of the ocean is a really good one. So I think that helps us to get a really nice insight into it. So we're going to do some tapping points. And as I said, there are slightly different versions of these sequences out there. But this is um, this is the one that I've been trained in and I use all the time. Um, uh, there's not that in terms of differences, there's not many differences out there. The differences aren't very big, that's what I mean. So we start usually with tapping the karate, the, sorry, the outside of the hand. Sometimes it's called karate chop point, but now it's better to call it the outside of the hand. So it can be either side. And we tap the outside of the hand and we do what's called a setup statement. So that setup statement is all about addressing the issue, the difficulty that we are facing the person's facing so we'll focus this on the idea of self-tapping so an issue or difficulty that you might be facing like a stress a worry maybe you can't sleep maybe there's pain EFT really can be used on almost anything um, I'm cautious to say anything but it can be used on you know such a wide range of things it really can support people with almost with almost anything um yeah, so we're tapping here and we'd address the difficulty. So, for example, a setup statement likely begins with the word even though. We'd say, even though I've got all this stress in my chest, right now I acknowledge I feel stressed and I'm going to try to accept myself anyway. So you see, we've got start point of the statement is saying, acknowledging the stress in the chest, the negative. And then the second part is bringing in the acceptance, accepting ourselves with this feeling. So even though I've got this stress in my chest, right now I acknowledge I feel stressed. 
and I'm going to try to accept myself anyway. Traditionally, in the past, the setup would be much more focused on the end part saying, I'm going to love and accept myself anyway. And you'll hear a lot of EFT practitioners out there saying that, and that's okay. The only reason um, I don't necessarily, um, and I've been trained along these lines, because a lot of people can't love and accept themselves just like that, it can create a bit of resistance. So by introducing, I'm going to try and accept myself, that is more doable for most of us. Okay, so we would say those words out loud, even though I've got all this stress in my chest. Right now I acknowledge the stress and I'm going to try and accept myself anyway. Usually we do that setup statement about three times and then we go to the top of the head. So we tap this point, it doesn't matter which arm you do it with, doesn't matter how hard or fast. We're just tapping this point. And interestingly, this point can be connected to um, remembering. So sometimes if, if we want somebody to remember something from the past, an event, by just tapping at this point, nice and slow, I might ask a client, can you remember another time when you felt like this, when this emotion came up for you? Or what does this remind you of? And if they tap slowly, that might help them focus in on something and that might help us piece the puzzle together but we'd just be tapping on here we might say something like we'd repeat words like anxiety so we go to the inner eyebrows so you just tap where your eyebrows begin you can do it like this or with one hand and this point is connected to the bladder so you remember the meridians we're tapping on these points around the meridians and each point connects to a different organ and a different emotion. So the inner eyebrows connects to the bladder and anxiety. And we know a lot of people are struggling with anxiety. So this point will support that. Outer eyes. So when we're doing the tapping sequence, the person would repeat probably something like the word anxiety on each point. So after that setup statement, we keep it really simple with the further points, just saying, I'm anxious. Okay. And this point on the outside of the eyes is connected to the gallbladder, which can be feelings of like bitterness under the eyes. So in that sequence, we might say again, I feel really anxious. And just for your information, this point is connected to the stomach, which can be connected to feelings of anguish under the nose. So we tap this point. And again, at each point, that person for ourselves might be repeating, I feel anxious. It can feel quite repetitive, but that's really part of the process. It's important to, to repeat that emotion, that struggle, that issue that we're dealing with. Point under the mouth, just on the chin. Again, you'd probably repeat, I'm feeling anxious. And the more that you can connect with that anxious feeling in your chest, you know, whatever it is for you, but we're just using this as an example. The more you can connect with that anxiety in your chest and feel it in a way that feels safe and okay for you, the more you're going to be able to shift it. So connecting with the body is a really important part of EFT. Then we go to the collarbone. So there's just a point just under your collarbones. So it's a bit soft. Just tapping on both sides like this or like this. This is connected to your organ, the kidney the kidneys and that's connected to fear so um if somebody's got yeah a, a lot of fear or a phobia like that example of somebody that's been attacked by this dog this might be a point that they are encouraged to use more but it's um yeah it's it's a good one for fear for feeling that intensity anxiety as well but you don't need to know this you don't need to know what all the points are that's the beauty of it do you remember i say gary craig simplified it so i usually wouldn't tell people what the points need they don't need to know um it's just just giving you a bit more background um as this session you know is the introduction to eft but you don't even need to do all the points in this sequence so some sometimes um i'll just tell somebody to go away and just do one point after this session today if you just do this point to support you when you feel anxious that's okay keep it really simple 
um, that's going to help you. It's not like, um, yeah, it's not like the formula is set in stone. It will still benefit you even if you don't do the whole sequence. So there's a point under the arm. This is the one that people find really strange. Um, and it's just tapping on the side. So if you're wearing a bra strap, it's just where that is. And it can be either side, it doesn't matter. It can help to pop your hand here if, if it's a bit much to hold it up. This is connected to the spleen. And quite often um, in Eastern medicine, spleen is, it can be damaged by things like even really cold water, cold drinks, um, you know, lots of ice drinks that hit the uh, stomach, they can damage the spleen. That can have different results. Um, yeah, but I won't get into that. But the spleen is connected to things like insecurity, um, you know, feeling unstable perhaps. So um, that's an interesting point. Just nice to uh, get insight into what all these points are connected to, just to see how extensive the EFT process is. So we tap on the wrist next. Sometimes we do another point around the ribcage before that, but not always. And it can be either side, just tapping across the wrist. This point is connected to things like grief, um, sadness. So it can be a really good point when there's things that we're struggling to let go of. We're carrying a lot of sadness. And the next points are the ones on the fingers. So these are ones that not everybody does, but I find them really useful because, um, or, and practitioners I know in my community that do it, find it useful because they're discreet. So you might not want to sit on a bus doing this or this. You might do, I have done. But um, if you are just tapping these points on the fingers that I'll show you, you can be really discreet at work, under the desk. You can sit, you know, around somebody that might be stressing you out just doing this without them necessarily noticing. So you just tap on the nail bed of each finger. So just where the nail bed begins on the thumb, just tap here. And with all this tapping, it doesn't matter how quickly you do it, how hard, just find your own way with it. And you can even just, if you really want to be discreet, you could even just do this, you know, just pulse it, just so you're pushing it. But again, remember, we would just be repeating, I'm anxious, I feel anxious, next finger, all this anxiety, next finger. And we would go through all of the fingers. And there's some other um, techniques that we can use, but we won't do them today. But that's the basic tapping sequence of EFT. So we'll just do one more sequence around the idea of anxiety. So you can see how you might apply that to other things in your life if you want to. So tap in the outside of the hand, that setup statement, even though I've got all this anxiety in my chest, you know, it's the color red, it's really big today. Right now, I acknowledge I have anxiety and stress and I'm gonna try and accept myself anyway. Top of the head, I feel really anxious today. In our eyebrows, I feel it in my chest, out of eyes, all of this stress and anxiety under the eyes, under the eyes, under the eyes. I feel it in my chest, under the nose. It's red and big, under the mouth. All of this anxiety, collarbone. I feel it in my chest, anxiety, under the arm, either side is fine. You can even do both if you want to, like this. Anxiety in my chest. I'm anxious today. Tapping the wrist, either side. Anxiety in my chest. And then tapping the nail bed where it begins on the thumb. Anxious. Next finger. I'm anxious. Next finger. All this anxiety in my chest. Next finger. I'm feeling anxious. Next finger, anxiety. So that's an example of a really basic way to use tapping on something like anxiety. But there's lots of different techniques in EFT. There's um, things like tell the story where somebody will tap and tell you a story about an event. Somebody might, um, we might break an event up into like a, into different scenes, like from a movie, um, which is called the movie technique. Uh, we can sneak up on difficult emotions uh, and memories that need to be processed in a really gentle way, which is called tearless trauma. So there's lots of different techniques. So there's a whole world to EFT. So energy psychology, 
it's growing in research evidence behind it. Um, it's mind body, it's not invasive, it's really gentle. And the thing that I'll sort of leave you with really is quite often EFT is used when uh, nothing else seems to be working. So quite often people will come to somebody for tapping when it's like, oh, I've had this issue for ages and nothing else has helped it or it's helped it a bit, but not, not enough. Um, the way that it brings the body into, it, it's not just talking, Talking therapy has its place in it and its benefits, of course. But what EFT can do is bring the mind and the body together. So it helps us shift things in a different way, sometimes in a quicker way. OK, and you might hear it's just so you can keep an eye out and an ear out for um, for this practice that hopefully you're more interested in. So you might hear it just called tapping, EFT, tapping, emotional freedom technique. It might be called meridian tapping. Sometimes it's referred to as an energy psychology because of that energy system it's working with and the psychology because it's engaging the mind, those different parts of the mind, which we haven't gone into in huge depth, but um, you've got a bit of a sense of that. Um, and sometimes it's just called this weird tapping thing because it can feel really strange. <laughs> okay. So I hope you got something from today. I'd be really interested to hear any of your thoughts, your feedback, your questions in the comments. I will have a little look. Um, I know this might have been a lot of information. So, um, so yeah, if you if you need to know anything else, then uh, just, just ask and I'll do my best to answer it. I will add some of the resources I mentioned uh, that you might like to look at to learn more in the comments, but really, you might not need to. It might have just been a nice chance to learn something new about about a different practice, a different self-care tool. EFT is a great tool for tapping on ourselves, but it can take a bit of time to gain, gain confidence to do that. Um, it's a great therapy, one-to-one uh, -one therapy. And I also do group tapping. So tapping alongside lots of people is also an interesting experience. Hopefully EFT is going to grow and get bigger. I'm sure it will get better known and more widely used. Keep an eye out for celebrities using it. I know people in um, things like I think Hollyoaks, Free Stenders, and some celebrities who were on the reality show. Um, is it Celebrity Get Me Out of Here? Celebrities in the Jungle. I think Boy George has seemed to be doing some tapping, um, which got us all very excited. So I will stop there and I will leave you with that information. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back for another session on the virtual village hall soon. I'll be doing I'll be doing a Qigong session, which is all about breath um, and moving that life force, that chi energy through gentle movements, gentle flowing movements. So it connects to this, what you've explored today really nicely. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, take good care and have fun exploring and learning more about EFT tapping.